Software Management Solutions. Today we're going to give you an in-depth overview of the Web QMS. The Web QMS is an enterprise management system to help any organization meet the requirements of the ISO standard. Our first module concentrates on logging into the Web QMS and showing you how to navigate around it. It will also show how you assign roles to employees so that they can participate in the different applications. When you first arrive at the Web QMS, you have a login page. If the user is not registered, they can register and the Web QMS administrator will receive an email. The Web QMS administrator can then verify that they are employees and subsequently assign all the roles needed. This first page also shows a support email to reach our support staff as well as a telephone number to call us in case you need any support. I am going to sign in with a user account so you can see what a user will normally see. The Web QMS is a truly web-based system. Therefore, you will be able to reach the Web QMS anywhere in the world, from your home, from your work, from a hotel, in the country, or overseas, wherever you are, as long as you have internet connection and you have a web browser, you will be able to reach the Web QMS. Once I logged in, I arrive at the dashboard page. The dashboard page knows that I am Miro user and tells me what areas are waiting for my action. One of the first areas that we see here are CIPs. CIPs is what we call the corrective and preventive actions. In this case, I can see that I have five CIPs awaiting for me, whether it is for me to conduct investigation or for me to conduct coordination. I can quickly see that some of them belong to a source internal audit, some of them were created as a result of customer complaints, and some of them were supplier issues. As I scroll to the right, I can see that I also have NCRs waiting for my action. NCRs, or non-conformance reports, come from our NCR module. I can see that I have three of them, one of them with a disposition returned to vendor, one of them use assist and one of them with the disposition of downgrade. It is up to me to go and look and see if I agree with the disposition and proceed to the next stage. I continue to move to the right on my dashboard and I see that we have equipment past due calibration, equipment that was assigned to me. The dashboard quickly points out if there's any equipment that was assigned to me so I can see when is the calibration due date. As I go down, I can also see that there is equipment past due for calibration. This equipment might not have been necessarily assigned to me. However, I might be using that equipment or I might be the manager of the department that uses that equipment and therefore it is important for me to know that that equipment is past due so that I can retrieve it and either send it for calibration or send it to the department in control of the calibration. I scroll back to the left of the screen and I can see also that the dashboard tells me there is expired employee certifications. This information comes from the employee certifications module and what it's telling me is that there is employees whose certifications are overdue. This in case that I appear there or in case I am the manager of that department. I can see that there is certifications for physical, ADC car diver, DMT, CPR, rigging, etc. So the dashboard keeps me notified again if there is any expired certifications that I know need to be taken care of. Another area that the dashboard shows me is recent documents updates. If there has been any procedures that I subscribe to, work instructions on forms, the dashboard will show me if any of them have been updated. And finally, we have the cost of quality. The dashboard shows me a snapshot of 
my cost of quality in the four dimensions of prevention, appraisal, internal and external. This information comes from all of the applications contained within the web QMS. Now that we have reviewed the dashboard, let's go ahead and review the other areas of the web QMS. When you arrive at your web QMS, you're going to have four distinct areas. You may or may not have the HSC or, or IS, but you will have a quality tab, a document control tab, an operations tab, and a human resources tab. In the quality area, what you will see are requirements from the ISO standard that we believe have an affinity in the quality area. For example, you will see there your quality policy with the ability to print a poster for you to post around your organization. You will see your quality manual embedded within the page so you can quickly scroll and this will be available for all your employees who have access to the web QMS. You will see a picture of your process map of your organization because the process map is a very important part of your entire management system. The next three pages have to do with management review and internal and external audits. When you go to your management review page, you will see the list of all your management reviews. This can serve as your repository for your management review agenda, management review presentation, and all your action items. Any of these documents can be quickly opened in the PDF or the format they were uploaded. You no longer have to go asking for the quality manager, the management rep, of any, or anybody that may have these documents. Anybody will be able to come to the web QMS and see them. You also have a management review schedule for at least the next five years. When I go to the internal audit page, is again a repository of your internal audit information. You will see the day the internal audit was conducted, the lead auditor, the internal audit agenda, the report, and any nonconformities. You can also pencil in your dates and add maybe just your agenda until the day of the audit, in which case you will add the report. The agenda and the reports are also available in PDF, Word, or any other format you have uploaded them. You can also see the internal audit schedule and a list of qualified auditors. Now we're going to look at the external audit. The external audit serves as an area where you can place all of your information regarding any customer audits, any registered audits, or any other audits that you might have, not necessarily just your registered audits. You will be able to put the external audit agenda, the reports, but also information as to what was the criteria of the audit, what was the audit type, the name of the agency, and the name of the lead auditor. And just like an internal audit or management reviews, you can link it to the CIP. The quality page also shows you the objectives. Any company seeking to become ISO certified needs to have objectives. In this page, you can maintain your objectives without having to maintain an Excel spreadsheet. Here, for example, I have customer satisfaction survey results. And this chart will update as soon as the QMS administrator updates it. And you can also see that there's a lot of information for each of the bars. This other chart shows me my supply chain evaluation index. I also have another chart for returns and credits. Basically, this page will be tailored to meet your requirements or the objectives that track the performance in your organization. I have also one chart here called the CIP Investigation Aging. This information comes directly from the CIP application. Therefore, objectives not only can be input in this page directly, but you can also link it via SQL to any other information in the web QMS or also any other application that you may have in your company, such as JD Edwards or any other MRP system. Now let's look at the document control page. The document control page handles all of the requirements of ISO related to documentation. For example, you can look at here all 
your procedures, and it will be presented on the format that best suits your organization. In this case, I just have the list of my procedures, the document number, the effective day, and a link to the procedure. And most procedures will actually open in PDF. The last option on the quality page is the CIP. CIP, or Continual Improvement Program, is the application that helps us maintain corrective and preventive action, customer complaints, or any kind of opportunity for improvement. When you arrive at the CIP, what you see on the first page is any CIPs awaiting for you, much like what you saw on the dashboard. Any employee can go and create a CIP by clicking on the Create CIP link. Once you go on the Create CIP page, a CIP number will be generated by the system. You are able to change the number, however, due to the nature of the WebQMS, which is web-based, you can literally have 10 people at the same time in various locations opening a CIP at the same time, and therefore the system keeps track of the CIP by assigning a random number rather than a 101, 102, or 103 number. Once you're in this page, you will select your site based on the choices that you might be presented. You will select your product or processes, or you will also have a not product related. You will input a request due date. This is the date that you are requesting for the CIP to be investigated. You can either enter the date or pick it from the pick calendar. Next, you select the CIP type. The CIP type could be ISMS for information security, QMS for quality management system, safety or environmental. Next, you're going to select the source of the CIP. If the CIP came from a customer complaint, came from a survey where the customer had some issues or needs improvement, you will select a customer complaint as well. If the CIP or the opportunity for improvement came from internal or external audit finding, you will select internal audit or external audit. If the CIP was an action item from a management review, you will select management review. If it was an opportunity related to a supplier, whether you are issuing a supplier a corrective action of, or there was any problems with a supplier, you will select supplier issue. If the opportunity for improvement was just something that happened internally, a problem that happened within your organization, or you have in a request, a preventive action, you will also select internal issue. If the opportunity for improvement came from an equipment that was sent to calibration and was found out of tolerance, then you will select out of tolerance as the source. And finally, if the opportunity for improvement or the problem came from a security incident, you will select security incident. Let us select customer complaint for now. Next, response requirement is not a required field. As you can see, all required field has have asterisk. So you may or may not select auditor, customer, or external as a response required. And finally, you have the capability of suggesting who should take the investigation. In this case, I'm going to select Miro Admin and continue to page two. On page two, I am presented with questions that are related to the source I pick. Since I pick customer complaint, then all my questions relate to a customer, such as what is the customer name, what is the customer email, was there a customer card number, etc. In the customer name, I can select the customer name from the list or I can click and type and put their name. In this case, I'm going to select the customer Apple. There is also a CIP summary title. This field helps me put a title to my CIP so that I can find it a little more easier. I'm going to put test demo. In the opportunity for improvement field, that is where I am going to enter my problem. And it's going to be perhaps a long problem or it might be a short statement. But here is where I'm going to 
try to put as much information as I can to help the investigator conduct the investigation and root cause analysis. So I'm going to put test, demo, problem, not known. I also have the ability to add attachments to my CIP, such as pictures or letters or a Word file, a PDF file, etc. Once I complete my CIP, then I can click on the submit button and my CIP will be created. The message I receive is that my CIP has been submitted for coordination. Now the coordinator will receive an email and they can take the next step so that the CIP can move closer to closure. As a user, I also have coordination role, and therefore I'm going to demonstrate how we conduct the coordination. Here is a CIP we just opened. You can see all of the tabs for the CIP, such as request, coordination, investigation, investigation verification, action, action verification, and validation. This is called the long path. This is what any CIP will default to. When I am ready to conduct coordination, after I review the request, I can click on the coordination green arrow. The coordination step has several options for me to decide whether the CIP is classified as a corrective action, as a preventive action, or as an action item. This is one of the best attributes of the CIP because the person who is entering the CIP doesn't have to make the decision as to whether this is a corrective or preventive action. All they have to do is enter the opportunity for improvement. It is the coordinator who decides what this is. So as a coordinator, I'm going to decide that this is a corrective action. And this step is also very important because a corrective action will have a slightly different path than a preventive action and also from an action item, because an action item does not have a root cause analysis. It's just a simple correction. Now we are on the CIP coordination page. The coordinator first has to accept or reject the CIP. If the CIP was for an issue that maybe was already taken care or there was double CIP, there is a potential for the CIP to be rejected. Once we accept, we can decide the CIP classification. CIPs could be classified as corrective action, preventive actions, or action items. A preventive action is a problem that has not happened. A corrective action is a problem that already happened. And an action item is just a correction. It's just an action that you're taking and not necessarily conducting a root cause analysis. Both the corrective and preventive action will require a root cause analysis and investigation. Once I decide that this CIP is a corrective action, the next question is what is the path of the CIP? The WebQMS CIP application has two paths, a short path and a long path. Both of these paths go through root cause analysis, verification, and validation. However, in the short path, there's a couple of less steps, such as investigation, verification, and action. In this case, in a short path, you're going directly from investigation to action verification. I'm going to switch to short path. Now I can assign who the investigation will be done by. I can look at who was suggested to do the investigation by the requester, or I can simply just select somebody. So I'm going to select Miro Admin, who was also suggested as the investigator. Next, I'm going to select the investigation due date. Again, I can look at the suggested investigation due date, so I can put the similar day or pick a new date. In this stage, I can also select an action verificator. Because I selected a short path, there is no investigation verificator to select, but there is an action verificator. So I will select somebody, and I will select the same person, or I can select actually Miro Partner, a different person. Next, I have to select if I want reminders to be turned on. If I say yes, I'm going to be prompted with a question of how many days before the due date I want the reminders to go off. 
I'm gonna put maybe three days. And the next question is the escalation. Do I want the CIP to be escalated to somebody if the investigator doesn't take or doesn't conduct the investigation before the due date? If I say yes, then I will be presented with two questions. First, who is the manager that I want this CIP to be escalated to? So I'm gonna select back to, I'm gonna select Peggy Bray. And then I get another field, which is number of investigation escalation days. So how many days after the due date do I want this manager to start getting the reminders? So I can say two days. Next, I have two extra fields, such as containment action. If I want to leave any information as far as what was the containment done on this problem, and also coordination comments, if I have any further comments for the person who will be conducting the investigation. Once I am done with this step, I will submit, and now the investigator assigned will receive the email for them to conduct the root cause analysis and investigation. Now I will show you other areas of the CIP. We have a status report. With the status report, you can select to view any reports regarding of CIPs awaiting for coordination, investigation, validation, etc. So in this case, I'm going to select awaiting coordination and submit report, and I can see one of them. When you get your status report, you will see a list of CIPs, and you can click on the magnifying glass to view the CIP and view all of the stages. And you can also see the CIP summary information here, such as the CIP number, the issue date, the source, the CIP summary title, and a link to print the entire CIP. Other areas of the CIPs are the advanced search. With the advanced search screen, you can actually search by many different fields. And all you have to do is select or input a specific information and then click submit for search. For example, in this case, I'm going to type demo so that I can retrieve the CIP that I created during our demo session now. And you can see that there is actually three CIPs with CIP title summary demo, and one of them belongs to today. Another area of the CIP is the KPIs or key performance indicators. The CIP has many different key performance indicators or KPIs that have been selected by us to help you improve the performance of your corrective and preventive action system. However, if there is any key performance indicators that you believe are more suitable to your organization, please let us know and we will customize it to show you just what you need. One of the key performance indicators we have is the list of open CIPs. So you can quickly see all of the CIPs that are open and who have they been assigned to. For every KPI, we have a report as well as a chart. We have here a CIPs by classification, so we can see how many corrective actions, how many preventive actions, and how many action items we have. And we have the corresponding chart. In this other area, we have total CIPs open by source. We have six customer complaints, three internal issues, three supplier issues, etc. And we are also able to show the corresponding chart. We have CIPs by product or process, CIP by status, CIPs by location, if you have more than one location, CIPs by month, CIP investigation aging, closure aging. As you can see, the CIP application has several different key performance indicators to help you decide where to put your efforts in order to improve your organization. Thank you very much for your time and we hope the WebQMS can help your organization become a world-class quality organization. We have other modules available for document control, operations, and human resources. Watch all of them to get more knowledge about the WebQMS. Thank you.